So does anybody have any idea what is data warehouse? Does anybody have any idea what is data warehouse? What is the general warehouse? What is general warehouse? This where we keep the goods and store it for our What? The place where we store the goods. Yes, the where we store Anybody, any other definitions? Any other definitions from anyone? What is the generally warehouse? What is a warehouse? Anybody please, any others? Storing a data. Yes, storing a data. Yes, so, so one definition we got is? storing data okay and storing data in one place is also same one place any other definitions what is a warehouse see let's see I'm not talking about the data about generally what is a warehouse so general warehouse let's forget about the data warehouse how we are going to design the data warehouse and how we are going to what is the architecture and everything is let's forget that one but what is a warehouse generally what is a warehouse a place we will store all your goods in a organized way right it's a place where we will store a place we will store all items Okay, let's forget about the data related items in an organized way. That's a very important thing. Okay, so organized. Organized way. So that means it's a common place. For example, let's consider that like a Walmart warehouse. Okay, Walmart is the very place. If you go to anybody in the Walmart, they store all items in a different, different uh, tracks different different racks each rack dedicated to a one category of data for example all books at one place all milk product at one place all meat product at one place all the groceries at one place that means so in let's consider that walmart is in a warehouse okay so where they'll keep all items in an organized way so that's why so the basically a warehouse is a place okay so where we will store all items in an organized way so let's similarly so the data warehouse the data warehouse is a so instead of items i can say the data instead of items the data warehouse is a so the collection of data in a one place simple definition is the data warehouse is a is a collection of data collection of data in one place okay in a organized way in proper organized manner so that means the data warehouse is a collection of data in one place in a proper organized manner so that means we will get the data okay we will get the data from different different sources Okay, so we will put so Walmart. So for example, let's consider that Walmart. They will get the data from different different companies. So whatever the manufacturer, they will collect the data from different different manufacturers and they will store in a one place. From there, they will do all the transactions, all the sellings and everything. So the similarly, a data warehouse is a collection of data in one place in a proper organized manner. That means the data stored in warehouse it should be a properly organized properly organized so that means so the data we are going to store in the warehouse is the properly organized okay so everybody is clear the definition of a data warehouse so it's not a complete definition it's a one part of definition okay so the, why we have to create a data warehouse why we need a warehouse 
See why we need a data warehouse for a company. Why? Why we need a warehouse for a company? Generally, why a data warehouse need for a company? Anybody have any idea? For example, let's consider like a GE or a Walmart. Okay, why we need a data warehouse for a Walmart? Right? Any idea? Anybody have any idea why they need a data warehouse for a Walmart? Okay, let's see. Walmart had different products and Walmart has different products. So they need to keep all uh, if it has a seller like a, let's say example milk products from right. one seller and uh, uh, like uh, another dairy forms from other seller it should have a data of all these uh, dairy forms in one place. Right. They don't want to touch different data into yes at what location. Exactly. See I'm saying Walmart has a different products in a different location and different countries or different states. Let's see. Okay, different locations and different stores. Okay, different to stores. They have the information. So different products, different locations and different stores. Okay, and every year they will sell products on the some sales event. For example, Thanksgiving sale. Right? Every year Walmart has Thanksgiving sale. Thanksgiving sale. Okay, so now the Walmart. Okay, so now for example, every year. So now they are planning for 2015 Thanksgiving. Okay, now they are planning 2015 Thanksgiving. Okay, so now how many products they need to put it in each store? How many products Walmart? They need to place in each store. In place in each store. Okay. So what price they need to put? Put for each product. Okay. How many? Okay. So which store? Okay has highest number of sales is it possible to get answers to these type of questions okay let's see so if you go to walmart store so the, who is going to take the decision on these type of questions who is going to take the decision so the daily employee working in the walmart is going to take the decision or the upper management is going to take the decision on these type of questions. Who is going to take a decision? Any other? Any other? Have any other idea? Uh, enterprise architect will take a decision. Okay, let's talk about the business point of view. Don't talk it about the technical point of view. Okay. Uh, okay. Right? So who is going to uh, take? So how they are going to generate so what price they need to put for each product so how many products so how many products they need to place in each store of each category each product and by category see how many dull laptops they need to put how many HP laptops they need to put in each store how many cameras MRE, how many cell phones they need to put it they need to order the HP laptops from the HP to put it in each store to meet the demand see if they don't put the sufficient number of products in the store they are going to lose their business so who is going to take this type of question so the upper management the management right management who is involved in the decision making involved in decision making process Okay, so the upper management who is involved in the decision making process. So they need to generate some kind of reports. 
See the management. See how many products they need to put it in each store. Right. So how they'll know how many HP laptops, how many Dell laptops, but each store, how many put it in Albany? Okay, how many put it in New Jersey? How many they need to send it to each store? So how they will get the data? So how they will generate the data? How? Any idea? Any idea? So how can he, how can they identify? How the manager can identify how many products he need for the store for this 2015 Thanksgiving? Depends upon the data. Depends upon the data. What type of data? Yes, depends on the data. Depends Not on the data. data. Depend on the data. Management can take a decision. Okay, so what data? Depends on what data. Right, depends on the data, not metadata. Okay, the sales. The sales data, right? The sales data based on what sales data? So, based on the historical sales data, for example, okay, last year's data, last year's sales data, right? For example, let's see, okay, how many products, okay, so each store sold in 2014 thanksgiving okay on 2013 thanksgiving and 2012 thanksgiving and 2011 thanksgiving and 2010 thanksgiving so each thanksgiving okay so how many they sold in 2010 how many they sold in 2011 how many they sold in 2012 how many they sold in 2013 how many they sold in 2014 for example let's say in 2014 they stored 150 product okay in 2013 they stored 125 in 2012 they stored 200 so in 2011 this the walmart stored 140 by each store wise let's see this is the they have the information okay so now in 2010 they sold 135 so now based on this data based on this data they can come up with an, an average only 2012 has a 200 but rest of the years is around 150 so they can make a decision based on this so either 150 or in between 150 and 200 so they can put in between either 150 or in between so they can make the decision how they're coming this conclusion so based on the data available from their database the last sales data see see here this information they have the data stored in the, the last year's data in a single place so and then here important point is the last year's data, one important point, and the decision is the one important point, and then see, this is the report they are generating. See here, which store has the highest number of sales? See, they want to generate a report. The management, they cannot write a report. They cannot write your program to see the data. They want a report. See, these three questions answers your reporting. And here one important terminology you need to understand is the decision making process. And this is the, the last year's data. Last year's data in the sense is old data. Right? That is old data. Old data or I can say historical data. Okay. So now, so they are maintaining all year's data. So they have the data stored in a single place. Okay, so now let's see here. Okay, so now Walmart has historical data. Historical data. That means last couple of years data. That is last year's data. Year's data. For a sales measure, sales amount by product by store by time see here so now 
2014 okay 2013 so they have the see here they have walmart has historical data historical data in the sense is old data so every year they are storing the data into database okay so now for a sales amount that is the sales amount how many how much amount walmart's revenue generated during each uh, thanksgiving so the amount per product so how much amount per each product how much amount but each store how much product by each time or a combination or divide it so so now everybody is a clear this line everybody is a clear yes or no please yes sir yes, yes sir okay. so now what is a data warehouse the data warehouse is a the structured repository of data repository of the subject oriented i'm saying subject oriented and a time variant time variant historical data used for why are we using for decision making process used for decision making this is the definition of your warehouse the historical data so time variant historical data used for the decision making process the data stored in the warehouse is the summary data not the detail record the data stored in warehouse data warehouse is a summary data if anybody says to you what is a data warehouse the data warehouse is nothing but a collection of the data what type of data it is the collection of data the subject oriented that means a the data belongs to a sales okay everybody is clear with the definition of this warehouse the stuck so the structured okay the structured repository of subject oriented data time variant data the historical data used for a decision making process so the data stored in the warehouse is not for the deletes it's a historical data non volatile i'm saying one more point here it is adding is a non volatile non volatile historical data non volatile means only inserts no deletes and updates every time the data warehouse is only loading the data no deletes because i don't want to delete the data from my warehouse see if i delete the data from the last 4 years here so i miss the some information i don't want to miss that information if i miss any particular years data so i'm going to lose some valuable information from my warehouse okay the subject oriented data the subject oriented data so this subject oriented time variant non volatile okay so the subject oriented time variant and the non volatile so these are called as a the characteristics of a warehouse the characteristics of a warehouse so what is the characteristics of a data warehouse so the integrated okay See, what is the okay <coughs> sorry the subject oriented and time variant non volatile historical data used for decision making purpose so that's the main aim of warehouse is to decision making so the data stored in the warehouse is a completely decision making process now the data stored in the is a summary data i don't want the complete each and every detail so that is the summary of the data that's only information the required information will be stored in the warehouse not each and every detail of the record okay so these four are the characteristics of your warehouse so the subject oriented time variant non volatile and the integrated okay so what is subject oriented what is the time variant and we will see here so the subject oriented means so instead of having let's see okay so now the bank account right let's consider the bank account right so 
savings account a customer can have a savings account bank customer can have savings accounts okay now customer can have a credit card credit cards and a customer can have a loans can have loans like a personal loan or home loan or anything and a customer can have a shares let's see these are the different different uh, okay let's forget about this one okay so the bank of america let's consider that like a bank of america bank of america they can have a customer savings account customers have credit cards and customers have loans these are the three different applications for day to day transactions see the customer savings account so he can withdraw or insert money or checking the accounts and everything so the credit card is for your credit card transaction and can have like a car loan auto loan or any loan division so this is a banking division the banking application and this is a credit card application and this is a loans application so three are the three different applications but while coming to a so the data warehouse the bank of america so okay so now the customer warehouse customer warehouse so the data the data stored in the customer warehouse is purely related to the customer subject not related to the any other so the data is a the data in the warehouse is a subject oriented subject means that belongs to a any particular calculation what we are going to do either a sales amount or it is a rank amount or it is a subject oriented or it is a customer oriented so the data okay so the data stored in a subject oriented the subject oriented example is so the customer warehouse the customer warehouse in the sense is it store all the customer financial information like a savings account credit cards or loans or savings or shares or anything okay the customer warehouse stores information of here the savings account balance credit card balances and the loan balance here the balance is the amount what we are measuring we are taking the decision based on the balance so the data in the warehouse is a subject oriented it's not related to a individual applications it's a <coughs> it's related to a certain subject everybody is it clear yes sir no please yes sir yes sir okay and a time variant the time variant in the sense is so the data subject oriented is this one so the time variant is that belongs to a particular subject particular subject like sales customer information this one okay the time variant so the data stored in the warehouse is a so time based like a, the data stored in 1999 and 2000 okay and 2001 so the sales in 2000 sales in 2001 and sales in 2002 and so on so that means so the data stored in a the time variant the data warehouse it's related to a the data warehouse is a time variant how much data in a 2002 january 2002 december 2002 this month and everything is a series of data stored in each year wise calculations okay everybody no. the non volatile the non volatile means there is no deletes no deletes on the data no deletes from warehouse so everything is inserts only no deletes and no updates Okay, mostly no deletes and no update, no deletes from the warehouse, only inserts. Because if I do the inserts, okay, we are going to lose the data. If I do the deletes, we are going to lose the data. Okay, so now the integrated means integrate that from multiple data, 
so it integrates multiple sources into a single place integrates the multiple applications data data into a single warehouse that means the get the data see here see this is one application and this is another application and this is another application so we'll integrate these three applications data into customer warehouse see here so we have a three up three applications these are the three different applications okay this application let's consider this application is using oracle database okay and this application is using and sql server database okay example okay the database and this application using some teradata three are the three different applications in a different environment so the customer warehouse is on oracle database so that means the integrated means we will integrate we will retrieve we will get the data from three different applications and integrates into a single place so these four are the basic characteristics of a warehouse subject oriented time variant non volatile and the integrated data everybody is a clear yes or no please yes yes yes, yes. okay so now okay we have seen the definition of a warehouse okay so now here i have here a two types of environment see i am saying customer is one application customer savings account is one application and the credit card is one application and loans is one application and a warehouse is a one application but what is the difference between these four applications the savings account i am saying it is a one application and the credit cards is a one application and the loans division is a one application and the warehouse is a another application but four these are the four different applications what are the types of applications see what are the difference between these three applications mainly applications are divided into two types divided into two types okay so one is oltp and another one is dss OLTP stands for online transaction processing. Processing. And DSS stands for decision support systems. Decision support to systems. So this is also called as a warehouses. so this online transaction processing online transaction processing means here we will use that's only for the day to day transactions use it for day to day transactions transactions day to day transactions and here we will not maintain any history maintain any history so the no history or limited history or limited history like a three months history or two months history or something kind of thing so the limited history of data okay now so here use it for the day to day transactions and we will not maintain any limited history or any no history data so that's a date so here so now these application the savings account application and credit card application and the loans application these three applications are the category of online transaction processing systems so that means the customers the customers means the user end user so whoever is the main user the customer can directly interact with this application directly interact with this application for your the data and here it maintains all current data current data means he will get the up to date information so whenever i want to see my balance they can get it immediately whenever i want to see my the credit card balance always it show you the correct data 
So these are the examples. What are the examples here is example systems are okay like a bank train reservation train reservation and the second one is okay, flight reservation flight ticket booking these are the online transaction systems booking and third one is the bank transactions okay so these are the examples of your online transaction processing so the applications are divided into two types online transaction processing and uh, the decision support system so the decision support systems is a warehouse only okay now here use it for the decision support system use it for reporting purposes purposes and uh, analysis mainly use it for analysis so here we will maintain a complete history of data that's a very important complete history history of data and the thing is only historical data not current data we will get the data up to certain point time time old data up to certain point in time Why I'm saying it up to certain point in time, old data up to certain point because see from these three stores, see integrations, integration means integrate multiple applications data into single warehouse. So that integration jobs, so the data, okay, from these three applications, we will load the data into this database on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis. So every day morning, five o'clock, so we will get the data from these three and to load into this warehouse. So between five and next five, these changes changes are only in here. So that means the current data will be in only online transaction applications. So this warehouse contains the data yet we have a the last refresh date, the last five o'clock data. That's why old data up to a certain point in time. Everybody is a clear and def clear with the definition of the decision support systems and OLTP systems. Yes. yes or no, please. I want everybody is clear or no. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's see. So now I'm showing we a, okay, now. So we have a, we have two systems, OLTP and decision support systems. Okay. So now let's see some characteristics. Characteristics of, okay. So the response here, we have huge amount of data, huge amount of data. That means here we are maintaining all 20 years of data because here we are maintaining the data warehouse that contain huge amount of data. Okay. So now whenever you have a huge amount of data, okay, so now let's see here some characteristics or you can say it's a differences OLTP OLTP in OLTP all daily operations are DML operations that means we can insert update and delete the data okay that means we can insert the data we can update data and we can delete data okay delete data so in DSS in DSS only load only load only and read okay read from warehouse for report purpose for reporting requirements requirements so there is no insert there is no updates and deletes okay so now here so the DML operations so and the response time whenever you want to see a particular data okay the response time is a the sub seconds that's in the seconds we can get it in a the seconds whenever i want to write a query select star from employee table or customer table where name is equal to when i so we will get the data in very quick sub second response in the query So now here seconds, not subseconds, seconds to minutes, seconds to minutes 
some time more also because why here it is the DSS takes more time to query because of history data huge amount of data okay huge amount of data so now here always it stores the nature of data Cur the current data only current data or very limited history is the air based on a 30 days or 60 days or something based on certain number of date number of days 30 or 60 or something so the current data are very limited history data so here the complete history history data up to a specific point in time point in time so that means last 10 years data last 20 years data are like this so the complete history data okay complete history data and old data not current data old data up to specific point time that means up to the last refresh the last load okay so now here the decision support size is la size small what is the size of the database so small to large so the application how much amount of data we are going to have in a table that depends upon small to large data here is large to very large huge amount of data that's why i'm saying large to very large data so it's a load only decision support systems contain huge amount of data oltp contain the small to large amount of data okay so now here online transactional processing so we are going to process the data here so the day-to-day -day transactions the day-to-day -day transactional processing day-to-day -day transactional processing here is only analysis purpose so that means a completely analysis purpose that's the reporting purpose and the decision making purpose we are going to analyze the data okay so now here see everybody is clear with the characteristics and differences if anybody ask you what are the basic difference between OLTP and decision support so these are the four important points so you need to answer it anybody have any doubts and everything is clear yes or no please yes okay so now let's see so the data warehousing architecture data warehouse architecture and load architecture so what is the main aim of a data warehouse the data warehouse is to maintain the data so what is the maintain see i told you here in the first point what is the data warehouse so the data warehouse is a collection of data in one place collection of data in one place collection of data in one place okay collection of data from what collection of data from multiple applications multiple i can say applications so here so now multiple sources i'm saying i'm renaming that applications into multiple sources so the data warehouse the source is nothing but an application into in one place so that place i'm calling it as a the target right i'm targeting so i'm considering it as a target so here so what is the so now the sources and then target okay so now the data warehouse the data warehouse is nothing but a target so we are going to get the data from multiple sources into a one place that is called as a source to target so we will getting the data from multiple sources and loading into the target once we have the data in the target from target so we will be generating reports generating reports okay this whole system this whole process is called as a decision support system decision support system so 
getting data from a sources load into a target that is the target is nothing but your warehouse one place i'm saying here it is a target or warehouse okay so we'll get the data from sources load into a target or a warehouse from the warehouse we will generating a report so everybody is clear so this complete yeah. process is called as a your whole system okay now here i'm telling the two different point one is source to target load target load so that means we'll get the data from source and load into a target and the second one is generate reports reports for analysis purpose generate reports for analysis purpose from warehouse so warehouse so now one word if anybody says the warehouse that is called as a target okay so now the two steps one is source to target data load okay now the generate reports for analysis purpose from the warehouse now here we need to take a decision okay so now this first step is called as a etl operations etl extraction transformation and loading extraction transformation and loading and then load so now here so now it is a the report purpose that is called as a the business intelligent o on olap online analytical processing online analytical processing so now here we need to choose a decision here do we need to go with the etl side or do we need to go with the reporting side okay so now the data warehouse a complete architecture the complete architecture of a warehouse is okay to get the data from a etl etl source to target the source can be multiple sources okay multiple sources of multiple technology so that means multiple source the source can be any technology so here generally sources are different different technologies like databases flat files and xml files ERP systems, anything, or CRM, CRM, customer relation management. These are the anything, any source. It can be a database, or it can be a flat file, or it can be a XML file, or it can be a ERP systems, or it can be a CRM. So the multiple sources. So the data warehousing architecture. I'll show you some diagram. Okay, let's see. okay let's see everybody is able to see here okay so the data warehousing architecture here i declared it as a basic why i'm saying a basic i'll tell you okay so now this source this is called as a different different sources so so the operational system operation system and flat file so these are the data sources from these sources i am extracting and storing into this warehouse this is the warehouse where all my extracted data stored into this warehouse and then finally from this warehouse i am generating a report okay from these sources i am extracting the data and storing into this one and from here the data is loading okay from source to warehouse is called as a etl process from warehouse to users that is the user so that is called as a olap olap means that is the generating a reports everybody is clear with this diagram anybody have any doubts don't go with the detail we will go in the detail in the following or in the next class everybody is clear so the basic architecture of a warehouse is to get the data from multiple sources and store into a warehouse so that warehouse has a characteristics subject oriented volatile 
and then time variant and integrated data. So here we are integrating data from these sources into warehouse. Now these sources are in the different format. This is the Oracle database and this is the SQL Server database and this is a flat file. Everybody is it clear? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So now. Okay, now here the data warehousing architecture so some little bit advantage of architecture with the staging area. What is the staging area? Okay, so the data warehousing architecture with the basic. basic DWH architecture. What is basic DWH architecture? And a source, sources to warehouse and reports, users, end user reporting. End user reporting, sources to warehouse and warehouse to end user reporting. Okay, so this is simple. Okay, now it's a basic data warehousing architecture with a staging area. Staging area. The staging area is an area where we will do all the transformation. So here. Sources. To staging area, from staging area to warehouse, from warehouse to end user reporting. Reporting. So that means we will get the data from, we will extract the data from the warehouses, first load into a staging area. The staging area is nothing but an area where we will do all the transformation. The staging area is a temporary area for all your data transformations. What is the data transformation we will see? The staging area is where we will be doing all transformations on source extracted source data extracted source data i'm not saying all source data extracted source data so that means first we'll extract the data from the source and do the transformation and do your warehouse okay so now this is the staging area from the staging area we will load into warehouse so source to staging and staging to warehouse and warehouse to end user so the staging area with data marts that's a very important thing okay dw architecture with staging area and data marts the data mart so here is a one new word called as a the data mart so now here is a data mart data mart. okay what is data mart so the source to staging area staging area to warehouse and warehouse to data mart and data mart to end user okay let's see ge okay right ge ge has different different business units different business units okay ge has different bins for example ge manufacturing ge manufacturing and ge financial Okay, GE Corporate, 
For example, these three are the three yeah. different GE corporate. Corporate. Three are the three different business units. Okay, so now I have a warehouse called as a GE warehouse. A GE a warehouse. GE warehouse is my warehouse. It's called as a enterprise warehouse. Enterprise warehouse. Enterprise warehouse. So what is the meaning of enterprise warehouse? So enterprise warehouse means it stores the data for a complete organization. So the complete enterprise, the complete GE. So it gets the data from manufacturing business unit. It gets the summary data from financial unit. It's get the data from the corporate manufacturing, financial and the corporate. It's get the complete warehouse. Okay, from here, from here, they can generate a report, right? Okay, so from the GE warehouse, they can generate a end user reporting. Okay, do you really want a user to generate a manufacturing unit? Okay, do you want to generate a report of report from a manager in the manufacturing unit from the warehouse? Manager want to generate a report from warehouse that manager belongs to financial and the corporate manager want to generate from a GE warehouse because as a GE warehouse contains the complete enterprise information okay this manufacturing manager is also able to see the data from financial and corporate and financial unit can see the data from manufacturing or corporate or corporate user can see the data from manufacturing and financial do you really want to see the data belongs to other business units? No. That's why instead of they will create a, a different business unit. So the subset of a warehouse will be loaded into that data mark. The data mark is nothing but a the subset of your warehouse that belongs to a the specific business unit. The data mark. So the data mart is a subset of data from warehouse which belongs to, to a business unit. So it's not a data mart is not a complete form of a warehouse. It's a subset of the warehouse. So now GE warehouse is again divides into three different data marks that means GE manufacturing data mark financial data mark and corporate data mark so the people from manufacturing generate the reports from manufacturing unit and people from financial unit generate a reports from the financial unit see here this is the way so the analysis users so they can see the data or the people can see the report from the two units also that depends upon the the complete thing is everybody is it clear yeah so today i'm stopping here tomorrow we'll continue the rest of the architecture before going into your the complete okay how to implement etl and everything everybody is it clear understands or not please yes sir it's clear anybody have any doubts please let me know yeah, that's right. Who is that Android attendee? I want to know the name of the person. I need to give that name to. Who is that? What is the name of Android attendee? It's Rohit. Ravi? No. Rohit. Rohit, okay. Rohit.